All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the latest update on the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case. And the latest update is that Prince Andrew has finally conceded that he has been properly served to show up for this uh, civil lawsuit that's been filed by Virginia Roberts. So let's go back in time a little bit and uh, review what's been going on here. So I covered this when this dropped back in early September, well, mid-September, September 16th, after that pretrial conference that happened on September 13th, where uh, Prince Andrew's lawyer, and Andrew Brettler said that the prince was not properly served according to the uh, conventions and um, the laws of the U.S. and Britain. So R Virginia Roberts lawyers refiled the summons according to the Hague Convention and um, civil rules of uh, federal rules of civil procedure 4F3. I, I reviewed all this stuff. I'll link the videos in the top right hand corner if you want to go watch them. But this was filed on September 16th, where uh, Sigrid McCauley, who is one of Virginia Roberts lawyers, said that they're going to be serving Prince Andrew's lawyer with the federal rules of civil procedure summons uh, 4F3. And they're going to be sending the summons directly through the Hague Convention Article 5, Article 3 to Prince Andrew. So Prince A Hague Convention summons are for international citizens or uh, foreign citizens, I should say. And the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure summons was for Andrew Brettler, who's an American. So you can serve the client through the lawyer. And that's what they were trying to do um, with the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure summons for F3. And uh, and I, uh, I showed you guys the delivery of the summons as well. So some logistical stuff I also went through. This was the summons that was delivered to Britain. Uh, that's the Hague summons. And there was another delivery uh, confirmation of a summons that was served to Andrew Brettler, who is located in California in Los Angeles. I showed you guys both those uh, delivery delivery confirmations. Um, and uh, we also had the judge saying, this is Lewis Kaplan, who is the pres presiding judge, saying that the... Uh, the alternative summons and the Hague summons are both approved. Um, as you guys can see here, plaintiff's request for execution of a request for service abroad has already been made. The motion to approve alternative summons under Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 4F3 is granted. So the judge granted the methods of service uh, uh, that Virginia Roberts lawyers uh, applied for and the summons are were duly served to Andrew Brettler and also Prince Andrew himself. Okay, Andrew Brettler is Prince Andrew's lawyer. Uh, there's too many Andrews, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so his lawyer and Andrew himself have been properly served. Now, finally, they filed this uh, last week uh, on September 24th saying that they accept that they've been duly served with a summons and they're going to be responding to uh finally they're going to be responding to virginia roberts lawsuit okay or her civil action civil uh, complaint so this is what they say in light of the duke's representation through his counsel uh that he will not challenge the service of process pursuant to rule 12b5 of the federal rules of civil procedure the undersigned counsel for virginia roberts agrees to extend time for the duke to respond to the complaint so federal rules of civil procedure 12b5 has to do with challenging a summons, but they're saying they're not going to be using that. So this is the technical technical rule that you have to use to say that a summons was not made properly. So so that they were saying that the uh, service was in insufficient, but but now there's that's what that's the excuse they used to say that the summons were invalid. They were also saying that the court didn't, didn't have any jurisdiction and many other excuses. They made many different excuses in that September 13th pretrial motion, uh, but now they finally conceded after the delivery has been made that um, they're not going to be challenging the uh, the service and they're accepting the service. So they go further to say service of process on the Duke shall be deemed affected as of September 21st, 2021. So that's them admitting that they've been properly served. OK, so uh, they go on to say the deadline by which the Duke shall file and serve a response to the complaint filed by Virginia Roberts is extended until October 29th. So so the court allowed them an extension to respond to the civil complaint that was filed by Virginia Roberts, which we covered like a month ago. Um, so they finally run out of like legal maneuvers to try to not respond to Virginia Roberts uh, complaint. And they're going to they're going to be responding to it by October, October 29th. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I can predict already what their next excuse is going to be. So that's it for the update. But what they're going to do next is this. So during that September 13th um, arguments, the pretrial motions, they tried to say that the fact that that Virginia Roberts sued um, uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein back in 2009 somehow somehow covers 
uh, Prince Andrew as well. That's why Alan Dershowitz was trying to get that get that 2009 settlement released to Prince Andrew's lawyer so they can somehow magically use that to say that Prince Andrew can't be sued by Virginia Roberts because somehow that 2009 settlement with Jeffrey Epstein covers Prince Andrew, which is insane. No judge is going to buy that argument, but that's the next argument they're going to make. I'm already predicting it. And they're also going to try to say that the New York courts don't have jurisdiction over Prince Andrew. They already said that. He already said that. Brettler already tried to make that argument. The judge didn't really respond to those two arguments, but I can tell you already they're not going to pass because the crimes that are alleged in the complaint happened in the jurisdiction of New York, the state of New York. Therefore, the Southern District of New York has jurisdictional authority to adjudicate this lawsuit. Okay, so that's already gone. Okay, so there's no jurisdictional argument to be made. If the crimes being alleged happened in Britain, then the New York courts have no authority over Britain. Then the British authorities are going to have to act. And given that he's a prince, they're probably not going to act. But this, in this case, they are, Virginia Roberts is talking about crimes that happened in the jurisdiction of New York. So the New York federal courts have um, authority uh, to adjudicate cases that happen in New York. So jurisdiction is everything, as I always say. The law in America and, mo and also in Britain is all based on jurisdiction. So wh wherever a crime happens, the uh, the uh, presiding authorities in that area, geographical area, they're the ones who get to prosecute the case. If it's a federal crime, then the federal authorities step in, the U.S. attorneys. But if it's a if it's a if it's a state or local crime, then the uh, appropriate authorities in those jurisdictions are the ones who um, have to prosecute the criminal or you know, civil complaint, whatever it is, whether it be criminal or civil, the jurisdiction applies. So jurisdictional authority is very important in, in law, in American jurisprudence, as well as British jurisprudence. And uh, American law, some of Amer a lot of American law when it comes to common law is based on British law, because America is based on uh, America's uh, foundation. Other than the Constitution, most of America's common law is based on British law, because the Obviously, because the uh, in the 1600s, British people came here. So American jurisprudence is very connected to Britain, except for the 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 first 10 amendments of the Constitution. The Bill of Rights is a repudiation of the British king and a lot of the messed up stuff that happened in Britain. But but like, you know, common law is a lot. American common law is very related to British common law. So that's something you want to remember. So there's some similarities between British and American laws when it comes to certain uh, areas of the law. But anyways, that's a different conversation. So. They're going to trigger, they're going to try to say that the uh, the American courts have no jurisdiction over Prince Andrew. They will be wrong on that because the crimes that are alleged by Virginia Roberts happened when the prince was in America and in New York. OK, so that's already done. Uh, next, they're going to try to claim that Virginia Roberts can't sue Prince Andrew because of the fact that that somehow he's protected by that settlement that happened in with Jeffrey Epstein back in 2009. But I've, I've said a million times. Prince Andrew was not a party to that lawsuit that happened in 2009. So even if Alan Dershowitz is able to give a copy of that 2009 settlement over to Prince Andrew's lawyer, Andrew Brettler, they're not going to be able to use that settlement to protect themselves. Prince Andrew is not protected at all by that. And the judge will rule that way. OK, so he hasn't done explicitly. He hasn't said that explicitly yet. But if he's a fair judge who has a brain, um, he's going to rule against that argument. It's ridiculous. Prince Andrew is not a named uh, co a co um, claimant of any kind. He's not a third party. He's not a tangential party. He's not named at all in that 2009 case. Uh, of uh, Jane Doe 102 versus Jeffrey Epstein. That's, that has nothing to do with, uh, with Prince Andrew. So they're going to try to use those two excuses. And the judge, if he's a fair judge, uh, he's going to dismiss those arguments. And so far, Judge Kaplan has been pretty fair. I have to give him credit. I was very suspicious of Judge Kaplan because he's but done some very bad rulings in the past when it comes to the Donziger case, for example. But in this case, he's been fair so far. So I'm always fair to everybody, even people I don't like. I'm not a fan of Judge Kaplan, but so far he's been fair. OK, so I'm going to tell you guys when somebody's not being fair and, and acting according to the law so far has been very, pretty fair minded. OK, so credit where credit is due, but we'll see what happens in the next um, round of arguments here. But uh, Prince Andrew has finally accepted the service of summons by Virginia Roberts. We'll see if he comes to America, but I, I doubt it. He'll probably just work through his lawyer. He's not going to be flying over to America. I doubt that. That would be very brave if he does that. Uh, not that anything will happen. I don't think the American authorities are going to arrest a prince of Britain. Um, uh, America wants to have good relations with Britain, OK, which I don't know why we separated from them for a reason. 
season, okay? No offense to my British viewers. I know I have a lot of them, but I'm not a fan of your government, okay? Anyways, that's all I got to say for this video. It's the latest update. When new updates happen in this case, I'll be covering them as usual. Um, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all, share the video, do all that good stuff. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon and on uh, channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.